And that's why there's another story that's very similar to that. And there's another update on it. And I have no clue if it's real or not. Now, there was a thing called the Tamam Shude case. This was mm. a, it's called the Mystery of the Somerton Man, which was a guy that was basically an unidentified man. It was his body. I don't know if we've covered it. We might have covered it in some form Maybe very, very scantily briefly, yeah. on last podcast and left, but not scantily. Basically, we weren't scantily. wearing lingerie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's how I always imagine a case that we don't fully cover. I just imagine mm. thin fabric on voluptuous breasts um, every day. <laughs> um, but the he was a man that was found dead in 1948. It was in this place called Somerton Park Beach. It was in Adelaide, South Australia. Right, so it's down in Australia. We've okay, been, we went to Adelaide. It was awesome. Do you remember it, we went to the little bar and how like how cool it was that a hippie little town? It's really it nice. It was fantastic. But basically, they found this guy lying dead, fully dressed on the beach, and there was uh, no identity that they could attach to him. Basically, they okay. couldn't figure out. They they sent a bunch of pictures around. They couldn't figure out what it was. They found a uh, suitcase of his at a train station that he had put there. There was some articles in there, and a part of the thing that was truly very mysterious is that when they found his body, there was a phrase, a piece of paper that had been ripped out of a book that had the phrase Tamam Shud on it, okay. which is a Persian phrase, meaning it is is over or is finished. It's the end of a poem, um, which is called the Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam, right? I think mm -hmm. I'm saying that. Nailed correct. it. Nailed, Nailed it. it. Um, that's the name of the book, right? And so the idea is like they thought that it was highly mysterious. And then they also found a note with what looks like some form of code. It's a bunch of okay. random letters and numbers on a sheet of paper. Now, they have been looking for this guy for a long fucking time. And there was a bunch of leads. I'm not going to get into it now because it's a long, it really is a long story. Well, was it um, just, is it possible it was just the crossword puzzle from the New York Times? You know, on that, on Sunday. It's like why? Why do I even purchase this? It's impossible. Why am I a part of this? It's I got impossible. the app. I got I the app to try to make sure that I could fucking because I'm sick. Of, I don't do the Sudoku's and I don't want to get Alzheimer's. <laughs> and that's what they say you got to do, right? What? So I get the app. Can't even complete it if I wanted to. What? No. What? So what's the point of this story, Henry? Oh, the point of this story is because <laughs> you, you said you, you started me. with quite a lead in, and then you said, "But we're you not going to get into it." So now. <laughs> We're going into a little bit. All right. So he, there were some theories that he was a spy, right? Because uh, they could not find anything about him. Like they didn't okay. know anything about his body. They know that when they found him, that he had a, um, he had a rail ticket from Adelaide to Henley Beach, which is another spot that he had not used. But then there okay. was another ticket that had taken him into town. They also found an empty packet of juicy fruit gum. <laughs> there was an Army Club cigarette packet. This is what I'm talking about. Um, and they had a quarter full box of Bryant and May matches. Isn't that fascinating? <laughs> I don't um, know. Some people said that they saw him lying there. Um, a lot of people made commentary that he was very handsome when they found him, right? Very, very handsome. So they uh -huh. know that he ate a pasty before he's dead. They do believe that he died of poisoning, right? Because he had mucus all through the inside. I'm, this is, you want this? <laughs> you excited about this? I don't know yet. I'm giving you details. Wh why do I care some about of the this details. person? Well, it's because they did a. They, there is a new lead on him that this group has been trying to get going for a long time, and they're okay. saying is is that thanks to the advances in science, that there is a. Uh, they they took old hairs of his, so they made a death mask of him. <laughs> what? I don't, what? But why do I? What did this man do to warrant anyone giving a shit? It's mysterious. Of, it's mysterious. Okay. It's, nobody knows who he is. Nobody knows who he is. Okay. Right? They can't find out who he is. He got a body, and no one knows where he came from. They think they thought he was some person, and that he wasn't. Gotcha. And then they thought he was another guy, and he wasn't. Or I as can, I say, okay. the DB the Cooper curse. Oh. Right? Where the idea is that that's what they call it in DB Cooper. They say that. That people keep, like, the problem with D.B. Cooper is you keep thinking it's the guy, but the next thing you know, it's not the guy. It's because okay. he died. 
It's because he went to the it's river. It's because he's dead. So it's he's got- much like the detective in Squid Game who doesn't register when they put the scanner up to his ear because he's not it- actually a member of the law enforcement PlayStation crew. But that also the detective in Squid Game. I don't want to keep on harping on it. But he was the worst detective I've upset. ever heard because he kept I, on asking the questions as if he was never there before. And then see, they're like, "Circle, have you not? Don't you remember your circle?" And then he would be like, well, "Why am I? What do it's I do?" TV. It, he it can't was, immediately get shot in the head. It's television. It was His character it was has to live. Awful. But also, awful. Kissel, it is interesting because you are so hurt because you finally tried to show vulnerability to content that was outside of your purview, and it disappointed you. And now you're afraid, and that's why you spend so long going. Uh, I like cheese. Uh, uh, I don't wash. I don't wash myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why, because you're afraid of oh, being vulnerable to things. That's very true. Because you're afraid of they will disappoint you. Also, if you have a bit of an odor around you, nobody speaks. Nobody no speaks. Comes around but, all right. you. So, all right. Okay. They are now saying this guy named Derek Abbott, who's a professor, uh, he's not wasting his life <laughs> because he's from the University of Adelaide and he says, the body of a man that he found in one of the city's beaches in 1948. It belonged to a guy named Char- Carl Webb. So it's he's an electrical th- engineer. So it's why Carl. it's Carl? Yep, it's not a goddamn mermaid. You don't why? know though. It could I have honestly, been anything. It could have oh, been anyone. The one thing about the people that look for DB Cooper, Amelia Earhart, Carl Webb, they demonize the Sasquatcher. The cryptozoologist, the one Sometimes who's looking do. for answers. At the very least, we know if Bigfoot is around, it would still at least be alive. So I think it makes more sense to hunt Bigfoot than it does D.B. Cooper. It's Carl. It's All right. Carl. And Derek Abbott and this woman that is also must be as equally mentally. I, I don't know what they are. Capable. They are hyper focused on this. Yes. They're hyper focused. On this, it's Rachel Egan. They think that they have found DNA that matched from. So when they he died, when they brought him in to to, I guess because pictures weren't enough, they gave him a death cast. Right? They they put a mask on his head, and when they pulled it off, a bunch of his hairs got caught in the plaster, right. and then they used their hairs to do to the figure. DNA test. All it's right, a fascinating there. story. It is. I mean, honestly, it could have happened to me if I wasn't so large. I when I took off all of my clothes and I ran into the ocean in Florida. Uh, at three o'clock in the morning, not realizing how strong high tide is. If I was Very. six foot four, I would have been out there and I'd be chum for the sharks. But thankfully, my big stern body kept me from going to the sea. But anyway, I want to talk about a story, speaking of odor, that is really near and dear to both of our hearts. And I'm hmm. interested to hear your opinion because a dude is suing for $250,000. Now, this Ooh. guy in 2017, he was British then and he's British now. He ate okay. a ham sandwich, a ham roll, right? Okay. Well, claimed- so a ham roll they- there is different than a sandwich. Well, I think they it's call a, a ham sandwich there. Yeah, a roll. Yeah. It's just a ham sandwich. Yeah. Maybe I just we'll- want to make sure we're clear as hell on this. Absolutely. And of course, he got it from a Christmas market because ham and Christmas go together very well. It's not a Love holiday it. for the pigs. But anyway, so he was there 2017. Guy's name is Tyrone Prades. He's now 46. And he says, since he ate this GD ham roll, he hasn't stopped farting. 2017. Now- so it's been five years, he says. It's been five years of consistent, you know, nonstop flatulence. This is the thing. Because Fernando, as soon as we brought this up and said that he, man, he, he hasn't stopped farting. It. This is the, okay. Is he farting in phases? Or is he literally constantly farting? Well, this is Because he says here, right here, he got sick when he first ate it. Got sick. Right? He said he got, he said he got high grade fever and severe diarrhea. Mm. Right? Yep. Then and he said he was in bed for five weeks from a ham sandwich. Buddy, it's a poisonous ham sandwich. The pig's this sounds revenge. Like you, this sounds like very specific UK aristocratic gastrointestinal problems. Well, you like know some of our friends have. Well, but you know what? I actually ordered chicken vindaloo yesterday. Uh, I love Indian food, and obviously the, yeah. the Brits uh, say what you will, but they did create the modern Indian food that we eat here. They can have some spice. I don't know. Chicken vindaloo. Well, it, yeah, well, it's also crazy. a ham roll. They, there is no spice in this. It's a ham no, sandwich. I know. But it's weird that the British eat beans and then they just jump over the hottest to the hottest thing ever, which is nice chicken. I, I don't know. I don't anyway. know if they if their spice level is the same as our spice level here. Because they I even when I even went there, they're all like, well, this right here, this is real spicy. And then I ate it and I didn't feel anything. 